All right, everybody, welcome to the Grab the Map podcast, where we don't just look at it, we grab the map. I'm John Crutchfield, and we get on here every Tuesday and talk about all things real estate investing. Uh, If you haven't heard, uh, I like to buy real estate. I like to fix up old properties or properties that might need a little bit of help with increasing their income. And then I like to uh, rent those out to people and provide safe, clean, and affordable housing. And today, uh, we're going to talk to somebody who, who can help us with another insight, get, provide us with some other insights into this business. Uh, Andy, you there? I'm here. Hey, man. Yes. Um, you're hey, on the, the Map podcast, man. And, and it, it's a podcast. Do you do podcasts? I have not. <laughs> well, you know, every, every good podcast starts with a good joke. So do you know any good jokes? Uh, not right off hand, I don't. But <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Uh, I, I won't do any knock knocks. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let that go and, and let let all the people know about my corny nature. Know that I, <laughs> I, I gave you a pass today. Uh, but Andy is in Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, maybe, maybe. Why don't we do this? Why don't we have you introduce yourself? Uh, tell us what you want to know about yourself, and then we'll jump right in today to some great content. Okay. Uh, my name is Andy Estes, and I work for Coal Banker Southern Real Estate. Uh, we've been doing real estate since 1994. Mm-hmm. My wife and I went to college and got a degree in marketing and just kind of minored in real estate. Now, to go back a little bit more, I had a mother who was a secretary for a year for attorneys. And when I was in ninth grade, she went and took a real estate exam and got into real estate. She never really taught me a lot. I just saw her always going working and stuff. And my wife's dad had told her that he, she needed to go in something because she was like him. She could talk a lot and get along with people. He said, you need to go into a business where you can sell and be unlimited what you can do. So we kind of in college talked about, let's just minor in real estate. We came out and got into the real estate. I got in in June of 94 then she waited till we got married in September so there wouldn't be a name change. And then she got her license and started in October of that same year. So we've worked ever since then together and stuff. Uh, I also went out and was an appraiser for a little while. I got my license in December of 94 for appraisal. And then two years later, I went to work for a local appraiser and did that for four years to get experience held my license for 20 years. And then finally I decided I was not going to use it again because I was fully into the real estate sales. And then uh, from there, uh, as far as investing and stuff, uh, I think our first investment property we bought in 1996 uh, from a family member and did owner financing on it. So that kind of gives you a history of where I started. And uh, this is all we've ever known is just real estate. It, it runs in the blood, huh? Yeah, it, it, it runs. It runs in the blood. So, I mean, you, you we, there's so many avenues we could go down, you know, with this. You talked about getting your licensure. You talked about being an appraiser and, and a licensed appraiser. Yeah. So you've kind of got a wealth of experience to, to be able to share. Most of our uh, audience is going to be real estate investors uh, maybe their first time trying to buy a property, an investment property to grow their income or start to think about a legacy. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of them are going to use a realtor to, to have that happen. So um, what have you seen, just jumping in with an unscripted question here, what, what have you seen in terms of um, being a realtor as far as changes in the real estate market from when you started to now? Constantly changing every day. <laughs> every day you walk in and you, you don't know what to expect to happen that day. Some of it's going to be routinely, but there's so many things that can happen. You just have to learn to adjust uh, with it. Uh, maybe maybe I'll ask this. What, what do you think has been the biggest change that you've seen from when you started to now um, in terms of real estate uh real estate licensure even, what, what are you seeing as far as like a, a big disruptor or change? Uh, I mean, back when we did it, uh, 
it was a little, I would say it was a little easier to get your license then. I mean, they've got more coursework and stuff you have to do to get it now. Mm -hmm. And then there's more stages like used to you would, uh, when you got your license, you got your license, you just started working. Now they have like a one year period where you get your license and you have to work under somebody and then you have to take extra classes what they call post classes after that before you i guess officially get your license per se to start doing stuff and same thing with broker's license used to you could just skip your uh real estate license and take your broker's license right off the bat and be a broker now they make you have a tenure of working in real estate for a little while before they'll let you jump into being a broker yeah you've got to have that one year of experience in order, yeah. to, in order to get that brokerage license. I, I may have looked into that once or twice, <laughs> um, but that's that's pretty cool. So, you know, real estate's in the blood. That's kind of what got you started. You're tag teaming it with family. Um, how would you say real estate has benefited your life so far? It just opens up a lot of avenues for you. I mean, as far as the sales, I mean, it's you, the amount of time you work and put into it is what you get out of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you think you're just going to come to the office and the phone's going to ring and somebody's going to ask you to come out to list a house or to sell them a house, then uh, it's not going to happen that way. You have to actually get on the phone and do prospecting and do things that are out of the ordinary that most people are not accustomed to doing. I lost your audio. That's because I pressed this button right here. That, that, that <laughs> now button. I can hear you. <laughs> when you when you do that, when you when you uh, you know when you put in that time and you put in that hard work, what what have been some of the benefits that you have seen from from selling real estate or or just being in the real estate space? It's like anything, you develop relationships over time. It's not like you immediately just get somebody and you just, your business takes off. It's meeting more people and more people constantly and then getting referrals from them or getting repeat business uh, from them. So that's probably the big thing is just uh, you got to get out there and meet people and you've got to listen to other people. You know, when you get into meeting other realtors or meeting other people from other places is to just not just think that, you know, everything because you got knowledge out of a book and you passed the test. You know, it's whether you're an investor or whatever, it's always you got to be learning the real you know? world. huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real world knowledge. I like something I think you said your dad said uh and it sounds like you're using that, you know, number one, you, you got to get out there where you're talking to people. Right. But number two, you, you mentioned that he wanted you to get into something that had unlimited potential. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was my wife, my wife's dad. That's so what he dad, gave advice. For. In law. Yeah. 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 Oh, so he was grooming you. He, yeah. he, <laughs> he was like, Hey, look, if you go marry Mo, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, have you seen that unlimited potential based on your work ethic? Have you seen the ability to be able to increase your income or is that something that you, you have found a cap? Uh, I think when you look at that, uh, it's unlimited what you can do. Mm -hmm. It's just, where do you stop here okay. in your mind? Where do you, and I mean, and I'll say that we've been guilty of it through the years is, you get to your income rising and stuff. And sometimes you get complacent. Uh -huh. I mean, and you're okay. And, you know, you may be making, you know, I never worked really another job except for just a job in college. So I never worked for somebody else as a, like a full-time job per se. But if you do that, then you may only make a certain amount per year. And then you get into real estate and you build it up and all of a sudden you're making, you know, another 20,000 or double your income or something, you become, sometimes once you get to a certain level, you become complacent, but you've got to let your mind go and grow. And it, everybody's different. I mean, there's four different personalities of people and some people just grasp it easier. And you may see friends 
who get into the real estate business and all of a sudden things start popping for them. And you're like, how do they do that? It's the things that they do, the people they're meeting and stuff, they're opening themselves up where some people are a little bit more hesitant and they may hear somebody talk and say, you know, oh, you can't do that. That's not real. Nobody would ever say that to somebody or just go out and ask them, you know, would they sell their house? You know, but you get things like that and you learn from that and you can have those hesitants in your life, but you have to learn to overcome. And I mean, you may have some ups and down years. You may have a real good year and then the next year you may not, but it's that consistency of learning and changing uh, to grow your business. Learning and changing. If you're on YouTube, you probably can see a little a little screen share I'm doing here. If you're not, I'll, I'll describe. Well, well, I'll let I'll let Andy describe it to you. He sent me this 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 photo earlier, just talking about. Hopefully, there's nothing on here that shouldn't be shown. Doesn't look like it, but uh, uh, he sent me this 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 photo here, and he and he and he, and he text and said, "You always got to have your your goals and your hopes and dreams posted visually." Tell me, tell me what we're seeing here right now. Uh, up the top is a million dollar bill. All right. <laughs> you know, that's the goal is to make a million dollars uh, in a year mm. and have that. Uh, I like that one. <laughs> the island is to be able to go to an island place that take our family there and stay in one of those little huts out on the water and stuff as a vacation spot. Mm-hmm. Then the car right. is just kind of a dream car. Uh, that I've had for a while, uh, just trying to focus on. And I'm kind of, I've been stepping up towards that car. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah. that's up. something, you know, a lot of people would look at that and say, uh, that's a very expensive car. Uh, yes, it is. But if over time, I mean, there's things that you do or goals that you have to set to inspire yourself. As our real estate co- told us one time, I mean, he could have easily retired at 60 years old and he actually did and left the business for a short time to his kids and they started changing it. So he kind of came back in and he said he had to re-motivate himself because he said, I didn't need money anymore. I had enough money to live the rest of my life and have a very nice life. Yeah. So he said, I had to put things in front of me that would give me something to work towards Yes. As a goal so that I could come in and be inspired every day to work instead of like, what am I doing here? I, I, re- I really like it. I really like it. And I'm a big believer in visualizing what it is that we want out of life. Right. If yeah. you want money or if you want the car, or the vacation spot, if you want the time freedom, uh, if you want to be able to be charitable, like you first have to visualize it and see yourself actually being able to do it. Um, I know even for myself, um, that that is a hard part, especially uh, depending on how you grew up, where you grew up, what you thought you were capable of often is a lot less than what we're actually capable of. Yeah. And a lot of times we underestimate what we can do, you know, um, if we really focus, put our mind to it, like you, you were talking about earlier, but being able to visualize like yourself owning that vacation home, right, might just uh, be enough to make you get up at five o'clock in the morning and start doing things that other people aren't doing so that you march towards that that vacation home. Um, that said, though, I mean, it sounds like you're a lifelong learner. And that's that's yeah. one of the things that that kind of attracted me to you wanted you to come on here is that you've sent me some stuff that makes it, it shows me that you are constantly studying, constantly reading, constantly digesting materials in order to grow yourself. Um, are there particular materials that you that you kind of uh, develop yourself with consistently that you might want to share? And I'm mostly geared towards, I mean, the real estate. Uh, I look into some investment stuff, uh, gold, silver. I mean, just different commodities and stuff, just kind of watching trends and stuff because history tells you the story. And it's like I told somebody one time, I said, I wish my parents had talked to me in the 80s and told me what was going on at that time because I graduated in 88. Yeah. They had just been through a rough time 
of recession and stuff in the 70s into the 80s and stuff, but they never said anything to me. They just, they went to their jobs, they made money, they provided for our family and stuff. But I said, I wish they had taught me what was going on and that, hey, this is going to happen again in your lifetime. <laughs> get prepared for it, you know, get, get ready for it. And that's what we try to teach our kids now is go back and, you know, show them what history and it repeats itself. And if you can, I mean, we got caught in it uh, years ago in the 90s, probably the late 90s was a little downturn in commercial and stuff. And with real estate, I mean, it's all about how the economy is. So if the economy is good, people are buying houses, but if people start getting laid off and stuff, prices start dropping. Mm -hmm. And so it affects your business. And, you know, you can have things in your life. Uh, I had a father-in-law that passed away unexpectedly at like 60 years old and stuff. And a lot of things just happen in a, a couple of year period of time where you can get, you can get out of whack in your income and stuff or the way that you've been living a lifestyle, but the, the income's not coming in. So you got to learn to adjust with things and learn how to overcome. And one of those is by learning from other people because people will share with you how they've come out of things. And if you'll just listen, this, like I said, you can always avoid, I mean, a 20 year old now, that is willing to listen to older people and take their wisdom and learn from their mistakes yes. and avoid a lot of those mistakes and never go through them and be very successful at it. If they will adhere to what those people are saying, instead of saying, Oh, I don't need that. I'll learn it on my own. You know, look, learning it on your own. Sometimes it's like, uh, you're going to, you're going to hit so many potholes that you didn't have to hit. Right. You're going <laughs> to, go through so much fire that you, that you, that you may have been able to avoid. Right. Yeah. And, um, I'm not 20, but one of the reasons that I like doing this podcast is just because I get to talk to so many people who are well, much more experienced, have much more success, whether it's financially with, with their family life, with their, you know, their business, their spiritual life, whatever. And I can look at that and say, I want a piece of that. Right. Or I can look okay. at that and say, how, how can I, what lessons can I glean to, to create my own little, um, my own little oasis. And yep. one of the things that I think I picked up from you, it was, it was on a social media post um, had to do with this idea that we, we do need to, to do things that we enjoy, right. We do need to, to balance our life. And I think that's what we'll spend, spend some time here just for a moment. Um, okay. Can you talk to me about like, what do you do right now that you enjoy outside of work? And uh, how do you, how do you fit those things into your life? Uh, basically, I mean, most of my time outside is spent with my wife and two daughters. Mm -hmm. I have a 16 year old and 11 year old. So they keep us pretty busy with their routines of competitive cheer. And then during football season, we're going with our oldest daughter uh, cheering at the football games and stuff. And they also do violin uh, and stuff. So they're always doing something. But it's like you have to take time for your family because you can get into working. We did this early on. We didn't we got married and didn't have kids for the uh, till after 10 years of marriage. OK, that was just we got involved with our life and that just kind of put on the back burner, you know, until my father in law passed away and my wife realized my dad never got to see our child, yeah. you know, and then we just had her mother left. So reality kind of set in with us. And basically, you learn uh, going through a lot of the uh, conferences and stuff we went to, you started hearing people uh, talk about you can't just work all the time, you'll burn yourself out. And we see people, and I see that a lot, where people work a job and they just burn themselves out because they're just working, 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 and they may be working for somebody else, and they're not getting the gratitude or self-fulfillment out of that and stuff. But if they just took some breaks here and there, but everybody thinks they don't have time to take a break. But if you take those breaks, it'll actually refresh you. So somebody had told us, one time, uh, basically, most people work a five-day week. Okay. So if you're working a five-day week, could you squeeze that work day, uh, work days into four and a half? And somebody said, well, why would you do that? 
because now that gives you two and a half day weekend. Uh oh. So if you want to leave to go out of town on Friday, you're going to beat everybody else because you're going to be leaving at lunchtime. They're going to, you're going to leave till they get off work or till Saturday morning. That gives you an extra day to get to somewhere and just relax, even if you want to just stay home. I mean, it just gives you another day to just rest the stuff. Can you get done in four and a half days what you normally would do in five? The answer is yes, because most people don't fully work an eight or nine, eight, nine hour day. Mm. If you sat down and look at how much time you waste, if you can consolidate that. And then you get people that learn to work it in four days, you know, and it's all a personal preference about what you want to do. And one of the things that we got from somebody was you basically got to start scheduling vacations because if you just say, Oh, I'm going to take a vacation this summer, but when are you going to take it when you have time? You may not have time. You may feel like every week, oh, I don't have time to go anywhere. They said, go ahead and advance and take the calendar and book your vacation. You can start out with one and then you can start adding to it if you want to take a longer uh, vacation every uh, month. Like you want to take two and a half days off every month, just start putting it in your schedule. And when you get to your schedule that week, you know, you only have four and a half days to work. So you got to consolidate all your work. And it seems like when you do that, then things start happening. It never fails. Every time we started going off to a conference two times a year, it seemed like our busiest weeks out of the year would be that week that we were fixing to go to the conference. Okay. And I mean, it would be like we would uh, go off to the, be going off to the conference in like, I mean, I'm talking about like two days before you had more people calling you, asking you to come list their house or come uh, show them a house. And you're like, how come it always happens <laughs> when we're trying to go out on vacation? <laughs> what about the other three weeks of the month? Why didn't we have this then? But it seems like you just, it's like you manifest stuff. I mean, you're planning to go out and the business just comes to you. And so it gives you something that it makes you feel better that you can leave, you know, because all of a sudden you've got business that would have been like the next week when you're going to be gone or something, all of a sudden consolidates into that one week. And so it's like you get two weeks out of one just by doing that. And it's kind of like it, it makes you want to get those things done so that you can go. You never, you never canceled those conferences to take care of work the next week. You just went anyway. Just went anyway. See, this is where we, we really need to talk because, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I really admire folks who can be intentional about what they're doing and be intentional with their time. Yeah. Um, hasn't been the best skill of mine. Sometimes I, I just grind and I get in the moment and I'm doing something, um, but it's not always intentional. And, you know, I hear you talking about scheduling vacations. Uh, yeah. I hear you talking about maybe scheduling a day off per week or a half day off per week, scheduling yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, and then maybe even adding to that vacation or saying that you're going to do so many conferences per year, right? Mm -hmm. And having them on the calendar, all, all which are signs of being very, very intentional. Yeah. Uh, one of my buddies, like every time I talk to him, he'll always say, that he's got a meeting with a professional development coach, or he's got this person coming in that's going to do some type of training on this or that, or for lunchtime every day, for example, he's a part of a coaching group. And he gets every day, he gets on a conference call with other business owners and they're doing like a networking call. Yeah. And I'm like, how in the world do you take the time out to do that if you're running a business? Yeah. Um, do you have any idea of how he's doing that? You basically have to learn to uh, schedule stuff. Um, our real estate coach basically said you take out a calendar of the day yeah. and it's got from six o'clock in the morning till uh, nine o'clock or so at night. And he said, you got to block off. You got to block off when you're going to wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. when you're going to exercise. If you're going to meditate, study the Bible or anything in the morning, you block that time off and you regiment yourself to doing that. 
And same thing when you get to work, you have to regiment how you do. Like our prospecting and stuff is from eight o'clock to uh, 12 o'clock noon. Okay. That's all we're on the phone is calling. Mm-hmm. And you just organize who you're calling that day and stuff. And that's your job is to do that during that time. You uh, schedule when your lunch is uh, for that day and stuff. You schedule your appointments in the afternoon and you block it off and you may not have an appointment that afternoon. So if you don't have an appointment, what do you do? You get back on the phone because you're always looking for that next appointment and stuff. You occupy those times. And for a lot of people, some people can do that mentally just in their head. They can block stuff off. Some need to have it visual and stuff. And again, you've got to block off for your kids, your wife and stuff. Because your kids are going to have programs. What are you going to tell your kid all the time? You know, daddy doesn't have time to come. I'm too busy. You know, you can take time and go to their little program for 30, 40, one hour and stuff and work around that. And that gives them motivation that you took the time to come see them. And it shows them something in you, you know, that you want to be part of the family and you don't want to just be the dad that's out there working all the time and not participating with the family. Same thing with wife. I mean, you can't always be at home at the time, but if you can be pretty close and be there to sit down to eat supper with them, you know, it doesn't mean you have to stop work. It just means you're taking time for your family, spending a little time with them because the kids are going to go to bed at eight o'clock or so. So if you need to jump back on and do some work, you can do it after that. You know, you scheduled time to show them that you're going to be there for them. And then that kind of goes in hand with going on vacations and stuff is having them to know that you're going to take a vacation out here. This is where we're going and this is how we're working up to it. You know, and daddy's going to have to work certain hours. My mom is going to have to work certain hours for us to be able to get, go out of town at this time, you know, and so I may not be home for supper exactly at six o'clock. I may come home at six thirty or seven, but you know, I'm working so that we can do this. Yeah. A lot of uh, nuggets you're dropping right now when you talk about being more organized and scheduling those things that are important. Um I don't think I've ever heard anybody say to to schedule the time with your with your family, like scheduling the time with your wife. Um, but it makes sense. It, it's like, uh, you know, we, we kind of do date nights on on Friday nights. It's our thing. And, and the kids go with my mother in law. And uh, every Friday, we kind of know that that's going to be our time to go on a date. Yeah. And that intentional time could expand to other activities, right? It could expand to our family activities, to these vacations we're talking about. Um, but it also sounds like it could expand to, to professional development, right? Like um, if we want to go to a conference or something like that to really get intentional about scheduling it. So yeah. one thing you learn is when you go to conferences, I mean, you can use that as your vacation. Most conferences are at places at beaches or places that you would, you know, like to go, cities you'd like to go. So you kind of use that as vacation because usually you're in class for a certain amount of time, but then you get to go enjoy the town and you get to meet other people. And if you have a spouse, like my spouse works with me, so we're together a lot. And But we meet a lot of people who are just the only one in the real estate part of the business and their wife does something else, but they always bring their spouses with them. Yeah. and take them out. And I'll give an example. We've taken our kids for years with us. I mean, our kids have probably been to Disney World more than most kids because it seemed like the conference was always in Orlando in uh, October. Right. So from the time that they were like one or two years old, they went with us and got to experience a little bit of that. But since we've been going, like uh, this past time, we went down to uh, Orlando and we actually didn't know there was going to be a conference because they had not scheduled it. And our daughter had their end of the year cheer competition. So we were already scheduled. Well, then all of a sudden they booked the real estate conference two days before we had already scheduled our flight in there. Mm -hmm. So we knew a bunch of people were going to it and we said, we'd like to get together with y'all. And the first thing they asked, are y'all bringing the kids? They're like, yeah, we're bringing the kids, but we want to see the kids. 
So our friends, I mean, a lot of them are from 40 up to 70 years old uh, that we deal with in real estate. And a lot of times they want to see our kids more than they do us yeah. because yeah. they want to, they want to talk to our kids and they're ask our kids what they've been doing. I mean, they're really involved with them and you wouldn't think, you know, why do they care about my kids? You know, but you've developed those relationships that they're helping you teach your kids too. And it's coming from a different perspective. So it's not you telling your kid, oh, you should do this or, you know, it's other people asking them, what are they doing in their lives? What are they aspiring to do when they go off to college in a couple of years, you know? So it's making them think, you know, so it involves your whole family when you start going off to conferences. It's not just you getting educated, Mm -hmm. but it's getting the whole family involved on the venture that you're taking, uh, you know, the destination that you're headed towards. And it sounds like the ultimate networking experience, right? I know one of one of my own personal goals is, is not just for my business to do well or for, uh, you know, my business to grow. It's for my kids to be able to venture out into things and have their own networks. Um, no. For some of the people that I do business with now, for their kids to be doing business with my kids, right, <laughs> would be an amazing experience. So, sounds like you, your 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 foundation is strong. Um, it sounds like that that work life balance. Uh, you you've got some very practical strategies you shared with us today for how to for how to schedule more of that intentional time with family, but also for business development. And I really appreciate you for doing that because every time I see you respond in social media or a post in there, it's something insightful that shows uh, lifelong learning is something that you're committed to. And I think that's awesome. I've always said, I mean, when I was younger, I guess growing up in the real estate business, I probably didn't participate as much. Uh, But I wish I had. If I'd have learned things back years ago, I would be much more ahead, but I can't go back and change that time. Mm -hmm. But I can tell people now, you know, learn from people. I mean, listen to them. I mean, and it may take you a while to do your first deal, real estate deal, but it's educating yourself. And it's like somebody told me one time, you got to analyze like 100 properties. And then you take those hundred properties and you just narrow them down by criteria and stuff. And you may get down to three of them that fit what you're looking for. And then you analyze those deeper and then it gets down to one. And that may be one that you put the offer in on and you may, and you may not get it, but you're teaching yourself to analyze stuff and learn. And the more you learn, the faster you can make those uh, decisions when stuff comes on the market or you see something you immediately know what that area brings in price, what the house should be selling for, if it's price right and stuff. And then little things you can start looking, you can do a drive-by and see what kind of work is it, maintenance on the outside, little things like that. You can basically speed up the process, but it's a learned process and it's not something you just get overnight. It's over time. And they say, just like Warren Buffett, he really didn't start making money till after 60 years old. Now, right. Everybody thinks that he started making it back when he was 20. Yes, he was making money, but it really, the snowball effect was building up. So when he got past his 60s, then that snowball started getting real big. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that today has been so helpful. We talked about so many things. We talked about lifelong learning. We talked about managing our time and being intentional with our time. Um, You know, that, that, commitment towards family and professional development that you mentioned as well is just something that I'm going to take away. I've got some work to do. Uh, I got, I got some better work to do. That's for sure. (laughs) And uh, I think uh, being around people like you that value these value uh, this, these types of things is only going to make me better. I think it's also going to make some of our listeners better that, that listen to this, this podcast. Um, That said, I think, like this is the kind of realtor, Andy S. This is the kind of realtor that you want to be dealing with, right? You want to be dealing with somebody who has tons of experience, but also is committed to learning and not um, not stuck in that con- that contemplating stage that he mentioned earlier, right? 
Um, this is the kind of realtor you want to work with, right? <laughs> you want to you want to be working with somebody who's who's going to conferences and getting new information, um, who has the experience, has been through several different cycles. So, Andy, this is a plug here where I want to give you an opportunity just to 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 let people know how they can get in touch with you if they are interested in working with you. Yeah. Uh, Andy Estes, uh, telephone number is 662-401-9503. And, you know, it basically comes down to, I mean, you got to connect yourself with people who have knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes uh, it may not be your best friend, you know, yeah. but it's somebody that you, you know has been around and you can trust and is going to give you good advice. And sometimes you have to ask around to people and find out who those people are and you go to them to learn It may not mean that you're going to use them always and stuff, but you got to put yourself around people who have been out there and been in the game for a long time because they've seen the ups and downs. And that's what you're looking for is that knowledge of what's fixing to happen next in the real estate market. We don't know time tells mm -hmm. that it should be doing something, but I thought that it would have already done it five years ago and it hadn't happened yet. So you have to learn to adjust and learn from other people and take their knowledge and grow with it. And when you meet somebody that's willing to share that knowledge, you just latch on to it. Um, yeah. if you have the right spirit. So I appreciate you for, for uh, being willing to share, being willing to share that knowledge as well. And don't be scared to, as I said, when I was younger, I was more of a shy kid. So I didn't want to ask people stuff. I mean, don't be scared to go up to somebody who makes a lot of money and just ask them, could they share some tidbits with you? You know, what, what's something that they would, you know, would have changed in their early years or they would have done. Cause you're looking for what would they have done? They've seen, they've lived so many years. They know what, if they had done this back then, they would have been more ahead and you're looking for those things uh, so that you can maybe implement that or take some of that wisdom and knowledge and use it to grow yourself. And I see kids all the time and I'm 50. So when you look back and I see the kids who start at 20 years old and they're multimillionaires by 25, you're like, how in the world did they do that? Right. You know, why didn't I, <laughs> why didn't I learn that back then? But it's, the amount of knowledge that they've gained. They put themselves out there and learned from other people and stepped into situations that other people were hesitant. And if you always hesitate, you may be 50 or 60 years old wishing you had done that, but you never took that step. Absolutely. And, and I have seen, I mean, in my own business, I've just met so many people that have the experiences you're talking about who are willing to share they are willing to share the information uh, when we have the right spirit about it. So you've done but that. You don't ask, they're not going to share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've done you've done that today. Um, you gave your phone number for how how folks can contact you. And I'm sure uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll put in the comments uh, some more information on how you can contact Andy Estes. Uh, and also, uh, just remember, we answer every single email that goes to grabthemap at gmail.com. If you're looking to get into investing, we've got some coaching programs. If you're looking for a, a, a Facebook group just to stay connected, we've got a group called Wealth in Real Estate. Um, Andy and I are actually part of a networking group in Tupelo called Bigger Vision. You can look them up as well. Um, we'd love to connect with you um, and do some business with you, okay? Uh, Andy, any, any other parting word before we break off here? Everybody go out there and get a deal today. Y'all know what I like to say, don't just look at it, grab the map. <laughs>